Hello and welcome to AIT 1101 Electrical Power Distribution. My name is Matt Luckett and I will be the instructor for this course. This presentation will cover lesson one. This is part one of two presentations for this lesson. Um, the lesson objectives for this entire lesson is uh, at the completion of this lesson you should be able to demonstrate how to induce voltage using a coil and a magnet. You're going to explain four things that affect the amount of inductance in a coil. You're going to be able to identify the symbols for a fixed and adjustable inductor. And you're going to be able to calculate the power and current on the second area of the transformer. So, but before we start this lesson, uh, uh, this presentation is going to cover a few basics that uh, you may or may not have had at this point. By now you've completed AIT 1001 and you may or may not have taken AIT 1002. And you may be taking it concurrently with this course. So, for those of you that uh, are taking 1002, you will actually get uh, this presentation or this information more in depth than what I'm going to present for this presentation. But to understand the subject matter of this first lesson, uh, I found it necessary to give a little bit of an explanation on DC and AC voltage uh, beyond what you received in uh, AIT 1001 as you move progress to this program. Uh, progress of this course. So, uh, to start off, we're going to look at some, uh, direct current, kind of what is it, and uh, how uh, is it different from uh, AC current. So, direct current, uh, the polarity of direct current voltage remains the same, meaning that once uh, the circuit is made, the polarity of that circuit never changes. Uh, the current flows in one direction only. So once the circuit is made and power is applied and the circuit is closed, the, once the current starts to flow, that current will only flow in one direction through the conductors and the loads in that circuit. Uh, important characteristics of DC voltage uh, it can be positive or negative in reference to ground. So if I have a, a, a ground for in a circuit and I test it with a voltmeter, uh, if I put my black lead on the ground and my red lead on the voltage, it would read uh, positive. Or there's another situation where a power supply could be hooked up in a manner where the, action, the ground is actually positive and then the uh, other side of that circuit would be negative, meaning it would ha have a positive ground. Uh, and finally, uh, as far as direct current, uh, there are three sources of DC power or three ways to generate DC power. Uh, I'm going to show you those here in just a minute. But if I was going to give you a graphical representation of DC voltage, this is what it would look like. So this center line here would be my reference or zero, zero volts or my ground. And if I applied positive voltage, um, then the positive voltage would just be a straight line. Nothing's changing. Uh, it would just be solid voltage with uh, no variance. Uh, or if I had a negative voltage, you know, from my reference to ground, it would actually be a negative voltage, uh, but the potential is still there. It's just the direction of current flow from uh, from your ground would be uh, different depending on if it was positive or negative voltage. Because we know we know from 1001, the current always flows from negative to positive. So if I have a positive polarity, then the uh, current in this situation would flow from ground or from my negative to the positive. And if I have a negative polarity, uh, the voltage is going to flow from the uh, negative to positive. It's always going to flow in that direction. But I can hook the ground, my positive to my uh, ground or my common point, uh, depending on the application. Some uh, old farm machinery, some old tractors actually had uh, positive grounds uh, to run the electrical circuits on the, on the equipment. So, I just kind of want to give a brief description of DC power. Uh, the three sources of DC power uh, is chemical reaction. That's what we have in a battery. So, you have a battery cell. Uh, oftentimes, they're immersed in acid and they uh, use a chemical reaction to generate the voltage for your potential. Uh, the next way is to rectification of AC power. So, this is just kind of a uh, this is a schematic symbol for a bridge rectifier. This is just one method 
to rectify uh, AC power. But uh, if you can look at this closely, I have AC power coming in on uh, at these points in this bridge rectifier. And the way that a diode is made only allows current to flow in one direction. So I can configure these uh, dials that no matter which way the uh, current is flowing in an AC voltage, uh, it will always maintain a positive on this side and a negative on this side, converting AC into uh, DC power. And the last uh, method is an AC generator equipped with a commutator. Uh, kind of in this diagram here, uh, this little circle here with all the lines around it is a representation of the commutator. It's just a uh, ring inside the uh, uh, AC generator that allows the current to be maintained or the polarity to be maintained on the brushes or electrodes uh, inside the generator. So like I said, this is just a brief description uh, of DC power. I just wanted to uh, uh, give for this for a point of comparison to the AC power, which we're going to talk about now. So alternating current or AC, uh, this is what you'll find in your home uh, and receptacles, anything that uh, you plug in in your home, uh, you're uh, plugging in AC power. That's not to say that once you plug in that AC power, once it's in the device that you're plugging in, it's not converted to DC, but uh, for Everything we're going to be talking about here is going to be on uh, AC power, like what we have at home. So with AC power, uh, the polarity is constantly switching. So uh, there's no positive and negative. It's constantly swinging uh, positive and negative, positive and negative. And the current switches accordingly, depending on which, which uh, where we are at in our wave cycle. Uh, current flows in both directions, like I just mentioned. And some important characteristics uh, to keep in mind with uh, AC voltage is peak-to-peak -peak voltage, RMS voltage, uh, frequency, and wave shape. And we're getting ready to look at these uh, uh, different characteristics. So here is a this is a visual representation of what you might see. If you could see the voltage coming into your house, this is what it would look like. So uh, I have a cycle here, and this uh, voltage is just chasing It'll go positive, and then go past zero, and go negative, and then swing positive, and it just keeps repeating uh, constantly. So, like I said, if I could see AC power, this would be a visual representation of what, the, what that voltage would look like. So, to go through the uh, important characteristics, the first thing we want to talk about is peak-to-peak -peak voltage. So, what is if when I have uh, AC power or AC voltage, uh, there's a couple different uh, voltages that we need to be aware of. And one of them is peak to peak. So when I talk about peak to peak voltage, uh, this is going to be the difference in potential from the voltage when it's at its highest peak and when it's at its lowest peak. So from the voltage difference between here and here would be considered my peak to peak voltage. And again, like I said, we're going to look at that just a little bit closer here in just a minute. Uh, the next thing we want to talk about is RMS voltage, or root mean squared voltage. And what this is, is uh, if you look at an AC wave, you know, DC, we just had a straight line across here, and the power never changed, it never diminished. Well, in an AC circuit, you can see that the power is peaks, and then it goes past zero, and then it peaks again, it goes past zero, so I'm, I'm never at a constant voltage. So what my RS, RMS voltage is, you can consider it like a, a AC equivalent voltage of a DC signal. I know that sounds kind of confusing, but the textbook goes into uh, this a little more in a little more in depth in chapter 11 of the textbook. Which, uh, like I said, if you're taking AIT 1002, you may want to review a little bit. Uh, if uh, uh, if you're not taking AIT 1002, you may want to go through that. Uh, just kind of at least thumb through that chapter a little bit to get a little better explanation of what I'm talking about here. So, but RMS voltage, uh, so basically what that is, it's uh, the, the, the difference in potential between this level and this level, and this works out to be, uh, so we're kind of, we're shaving off the peaks here, but what the RMS voltage is, is uh, can be calculated as 70.7 percent of the peak-to-peak -peak voltage, is your RMS voltage or your effective voltage. So 
So uh, if I break this down on my different voltages, my peak to peak voltage is the actual amplitude of the wave. So that's, that can be considered my peak to peak. My RMS, or roots mean squared, or effective voltage, is the actual uh, voltage, the power that you are actually getting from this AC signal. And like I said a while ago, your RMS voltage is equal to 70.7% .7 of your peak to peak voltage. And when you're using a digital multimeter, uh, your digital multimeter is displaying uh, the RMS voltage is not displaying the peak to peak voltage. So when you test the outlet or, or a AC signal like in the power supplies on our trainers in the lab, you're actually measuring the RMS voltage and not the peak to peak voltage. So let's use an, uh, let me provide you an example of the voltage that you would see in an AC signal. And we're going to use your home receptacle as an example. So your, if you measure the voltage output of a receptacle in your home, uh, you're going to read somewhere in the neighborhood of 120 volts. It could fluctuate depending on um, what time of day and the loads on, on the uh, utility circuits. But typically you're going to read somewhere around 120 volts AC on your uh, receptacle. And like I said, that's the RMS value. And we've already determined the RMS value is 70.7% of the actual peak-to-peak -peak signal or voltage coming to that outlet. So if I do the calculation here to determine my peak-to-peak -peak from the RMS, I take my 120 volts RMS and divide it by 0 0.707 or 70.7% uh, without the percent sign. So I take 120 volts divided by 0 0.707 and that gives me my peak to peak voltage as 169 or almost 170 volts AC peak to peak on a receptacle when you're only measuring 120 volts. So like I said, I just kind of wanted to uh, provide a little bit of background on this for those of you that have not taken AIT 1002 or you're uh, taking it now and maybe you haven't got to this point in the, in the class. So the next thing we want to talk about with AC power is frequency. So uh, when I have a waveform, the frequency is how many times this cycle repeats in a second. So here's my cycle. So this is just happening over and over and over. Uh, and the frequency measured in hertz is the number of cycles in a second. So how many times does this uh, AC power go positive and negative again to complete one cycle uh, in uh, one second? So a typical uh, AC circuit for anything you're going to run into in a factory, uh, your home, so anything coming in from the utility company uh, is alternating at 60 hertz. So that means that this cycle is alternating, or we're making a full cycle uh, 60 times a second. So that's 60 cycles a second, or if you break it down, how long does the cycle last, uh, every cycle uh, repeats every 16.67 milliseconds. So uh, it takes uh, 16 milliseconds to complete a cycle and this just continues on and on and on and on. So and then the last thing I want to look at here is wave shape. So everything we've been looking at thus far has just been a sine wave and that's typically what you're going to see uh, coming from the utilities unless there's a problem. Uh, you'll see just a, a really smooth, clean sine wave, but there's actually other types of waves that you might run into. So here's our sine wave. You know, you could actually get into uh, a half wave, and that's one way of rectification where you use diodes or a rectifier to cut off the negative edge, so then you just have a half wave. So uh, that's a possible potential wave. Have a complex wave where uh, this may be something in some type of uh, uh, device that uh, tries to create a signal for uh, positioning or running a, uh, some kind of different uh, device that requires an a, a altered signal. Uh, you have complex wave, you have a triangular wave, uh, also called a sawtooth wave uh, for obvious reasons, and then you have a, potentially a square tooth wave. And these are not all potential wave shapes, but this is the typical ones that you might see uh, in industry or uh, in a uh, commercial environment.
So, uh, basically what I've covered is just basic AC power compared to DC power, and uh, that's in preparation for the actual lesson. So you'll definitely want to watch this and uh, pay attention to what, what what is covered here before you actually get into the lesson material where we talk about inductance and transformers and that sort of thing. But if you have questions, uh, like always, uh, if you've had my 1001 class, uh, you'll know that I'm, I have office hours. So you can stop by my office, uh, call my desk phone, or uh, send me an email, or post a question discussion board for the other, so the other students can potentially see see my answer because a lot of times they may have the same questions. So, like I said, uh, please uh, send me your questions and uh, I will do my best to answer them. Thank you.